What's up everybody, Brian Mann here, Hands-On Auto Training, end of day, October 18th, 2021. Guys, don't forget, premium members, this Thursday we have our membership meeting at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, this Friday, October 22nd, 2021, is a U-Scope drawing for those that are signed up to the core premium memberships. So don't forget about that, mark your calendars. Also, mark your calendar for this. Tomorrow, if you're uh, on the free premium or core membership, I will be releasing the video. The video is going to be up there for the fuel trims. I've been working on that for a while. And get this, guys, on YouTube, you're going to get it too. You're going to get a version of it for YouTube very similar. I do have a worksheet there that I'm, I'm expecting people to be able to uh, fill out. Like, if you want to learn more about fuel trims, if you're very weak on that, start taking this worksheet and just fill out fuel trims. I'm talking to them at idle. Start checking cars at idle to come into your shop, roll into your bay. Check it out. So today is a pretty interesting day, pretty short and quick and easy because I worked on my video most of the day. What's going on everybody? We got our first job of the day, a 2003 Dodge Neon setting a P0138. If you look at the O2 sensor voltage for bank one sensor two, that's the back O2 sensor, we're sitting at five volts. That is way high. And if we wiggle this harness down here, you can see we're at 3.27 volts. And if he keeps on wiggling that, it'll go high and low. Um, we've got a wiring problem, and it's to the uh, return side of the sensor. Check out how this works. Go ahead and take a look at this diagram here. We've got our O2 sensor signal here, and if we're reading high voltage on this signal, it means that uh, more than likely we're not able to pull it low here. I think we have an open between this splice and this O2 sensor. This is the low side, so this uh, sensor can't pull this signal low if we have a bad connection here. It's going to read high all the time. This 2003 Dodge Neon gave me a good chance to show the technician how I handle uh, intermittent diagnostic problems. So this had no codes when I arrived on site. I remember on Friday he mentioned to me something about the uh, O2 sensor code, a O2 sensor code. I didn't know which one. And when I got there, we had no codes in the whole system. That's the first thing I do is plug in, check the codes, take a peek around, didn't see anything obvious. Now, once he gave me the di diagnostic trouble code it was heading at P0138, I had something to go on. Taking a look at this flow chart, step one is basically look at the scan tool data with the engine warmed up, and is this oxygen sensor voltage uh, above 3.7 volts? And at the time when I got there on site, it was not above 3.7 volts. I think it was around 3.2, 3.4 volts or so. So uh, you know we didn't have a problem that would actually cause that code to set or give us some direction on the flow chart, should I say? So after I saw that, I figured, well, you know, let me wiggle around these wires. We started wiggling the wires, and sure enough, that voltage started changing. So that's just a tidbit of how I go about that. We got my neighbor's 2017 Hyundai Sonata, and this thing is popping a misfire code. We do have a P0304, one of three stored, and these are all the same codes here. If I start this up... We do have a misfire right now, and it definitely increases under load. I'll tell you ahead of time, I'm almost 100% sure a spark plug's gonna take care of this because I've done this before. Okay, what we're gonna do is just go one cylinder at a time here and take a look at this uh, secondary ignition. This is through the cop one. It's there we go, we're gonna steady out this pattern. So this is on cylinder number one, and I wanna go ahead and shorten up our time here. That should be good, so. You can see we have our pattern for cylinder number one. There's our pattern for cylinder number two. Here's number four. You can see we have a very, very poor pattern here. That's number four. There's number three. You can, you can see this burn line here. We have a burn line. The spark plug fires and then goes out. Number two. We also have that, number one. So right now what we see here is we don't have any burn line. This is like a spark and then it's out, apparently. Let's take a look at what these KVs look like too. You see how high the KVs are here? We have good KVs, way up high. And number four, it's like the spark is jumping out. So let's get some plugs in here and come back and try it. Let's take a look here. This is the plug number three. It's got a lot of lot of carbon buildup on that tip of that thing. These were replaced about six months ago. 
This is our cylinder number four plug. I'm hoping you guys can see. I'm not sure how the lighting is here, but this is this is a spark plug for cylinder number four. You can see this has a large amount of carbon built up here, and it almost looks like maybe tracking to the bottom of the porcelain over here. I mean, the insulator's right where my fingertip is, but that's pretty nasty. Talk about that. Boom, it's done. Sweet. She's, she's ready to rock and roll. Good for a trade-in, baby. <laughs> Get her down the road. Sweet. All right, I'm just going to hook this up real quick and take another quick screenshot so people can see. Okay, there we go. This is cylinder number one. There's two. There is three. And there is four. Next up, we've got ourselves a used computer in a 2004 Chevy Colorado. Okay, so when things go wrong with GMs, you're gonna get this type of stuff. Cyber security access failure and all kinds of other baloney. Let's see what's up. Okay, frustration is mounting on this job, but check this out. See my little OBD2 code reader here? The inexpensive one? We got a bad connection right at the DLC causing all kinds of issues, so we gotta get that fixed first. We've got ourselves some spread out pins at this DLC. All right, so I'm on here. I don't know if you can see there, but it says 57 minutes time remaining. Oh boy. I'm holding my hand down here real tight on this uh, DLC connector because it's just not working right. That's a problem with this vehicle. Bad connection at the DLC, so I'm holding real tight. Hands are getting tired trying to hold this connector. Um, how about it says four minutes and 20 seconds left, but I tell you what, I bet you it's more like two minutes. All right, we got it. So at this point, I'm going to let go of this connector because my hand is about to fall off. And I got to find a way to wedge this in there, or I'll just try to start a theft to turn and learn right now. And we're going to hit proceed with same VIN. There's a possibility I got the wires wedged right in the right spot. But what's been really frustrating about TechLine Connect is if this thing airs out, I almost got to restart TechLine Connect completely to get this thing going. But let's see if we can start ourselves a theft deterrent learn. All right, we got it started. So I got to tell you, I'm surprised that it, all these problems, uh, even that cybersecurity code and all that other baloney was just tied to the DLC being bad. I've had a few of these uh, Colorados. I don't know what it is about the body style of the Colorado, but even though it's the same as a Trailblazer, I've had more problems with Colorados having weird, um, I guess you'd call it cybersecurity errors or off-board programming detected, all kinds of stuff like that. So this is going and we'll see what it does in 10 minutes. Well, that Colorado ended up having other issues. Uh, the shop's going to look further into it. It's kind of like a crank, a start, stall, rough running, uh, misfire. They're going to look into that more. Maybe I'll get a call back on that one. Now, I got to tell you, the field trim video is up on the membership site. And if you stuck around this long on YouTube watching this video, it's going to be up in about probably about two minutes after this video is published. You're going to see this uh, video published. So uh, the field trim video, should I say, will be published. So check that out. If you guys have any questions or comments about that, please let me know. I'd like to hear some input. Also, just so you know, that uh, Fuel Trim video has a worksheet as the next lesson. And here's a little bit on that worksheet. So guys, I challenge you to go on to the uh, membership site, download this PDF. You can print this out. Start taking a look at other vehicles. You can even be using a generic cheapo scanner tool like this one. This is, a, I think, a $100 scanner. And we can just get in there and see the live data. I'm going to go ahead and write this information down. You can see our short-term fuel trims are right about zero for bank one and in bank two, but our long-terms are adding a bit of fuel. Let me go ahead and rev this up. I like just messing around here. This is how you can really learn what's going on in a vehicle, and it's normal to see the numbers changing often, but let them settle down. This vehicle is all warmed up. As you see, we're 189 degrees cooling temp. See here we've got uh, our fuel trims recorded, our total fuel trims are recorded for bank one and bank two on this vehicle. I challenge you to get out there and do this yourself. If you don't have a firm grasp of fuel trims, you need to start doing this and within 
a week. If you filled out this paper that I have here a few times, you'll, you'll have a firm understanding about things. Hey, thanks a lot for taking the time to watch. I appreciate all the help and support. You guys have a great evening. Bye-bye.